Alright, so I'm sure you guys are wondering where episode 7 is and what this thing is. And a funny story, as I was uploading episode 7, upload went just fine, so I removed it from my hard drive, only to come back to YouTube having a, a critical processing error, which caused the video to be completely unsalvageable. So now the actual recording is lost forever, and so in the meantime, we whipped up this little recap video so you guys don't miss out on all the important stuff that went down. I'm also extremely sick, which is causing this stuff to get rolled out a little bit later than I'd like, so uh, enjoy! Yeah, so right after we finished our the fight against the Predacons, Harry got a message from Roadblock. Essentially a text like, hey, can you tell Quasar to meet me in our dressing room? Thanks. And Quasar learned from his mistake the day previous with, with, with Crazy Bat. Um, and so with some apprehension, we eventually agree that Roadblock is chill enough if, if uh, Rotorback and Synthesis stay outside the dressing room and then Harry and Quasar go in, it'll be fine. But first, we decide we're going to like get cleaned up in the dressing room so we don't look like we just got lightly kicked in. Um, and when we get there, there's Firecracker waiting for us. Ah, oh, Spectrum, there you are! I wanted to congratulate you! What a fight! What a performance! Lion for Ed, what a fine heel you're turning out to be! Using what I gave you to craft a personal narrative, I love to see it! I haven't seen a crowd so invested in a potential rivalry since Skylinks and Skybite went to head-to-head! -head. Oh, what a match! So many broken teeth! And Gamma's failed romance with the opponent, love to see it! Our audience loves interpersonal drama! But, to the point, you've been doing so well that some of our... Wealthier audience members have some gifts for you. And so then, after Firecracker gave us his spiel about why we were very neat and cool, um, he gave us a gift gift basket of like tributes, basically donations from the crowd that were specified to be given up to us between matches or whatever. And so on the boxes, it was like. Our names, except Synthesis, which just said the scary one. Okay. Understandably, because of uh, Quasar's very near-death experiences, uh, he decided to open his last. And Harry, with uh, no apparent fear of death, opened his first. And he got 300 Shannocks. Synthesis got a weapon upgrade, which could make uh, her weapons scarier. Which you put on her electro sword. Bzz, bzz, ooh. Rodeback got a wrecker upgrade, which uh, she decided to apply to her shotgun. So even if she misses, she still gets something out of it. And leaving the best for last, maybe, Quasar got an element jet, which he put into his mouth. So the dragon can now actually breathe real fire. Woo! So we rendezvous with Roadblock and Blackout, go to their dressing rooms, it's just Roadblock there, casually waiting, threateningly, or not. He gestures for Quasar to sit next to him while Harry watches, and the other two way outside of security detail. Harry told me about what happened, so I just wanted to give you some advice. One well-traveled bot to a fairly young spark such as yourself. I just want to talk to you about red flags. By my count, there are at least four that everyone in the room noticed, except for you. Quasar is promptly dying of embarrassment, as the other are dying of laughter. And while Roadblock continues to give him the talk, and Quasar just books it out of there with no dignity left. They decide to get back to their safe house, and just get whatever info they can out of the Decepticon that they managed to capture. A chap with the fortunate name of Firefoot. As we go to check on him, everybody can hear him entertaining himself via belting out the Cybertron equivalent of Hail to the Chief. You got the touch! You've got the power! Yeah! Uh, after a lot of interrogating, he continues to sing purely despite everyone. Quasar shakes him violently. Shut up. But Quasar, unhinging his jaw, coerced him into working for them as a DJD mole. Save some body horror for the rest of us. 
Hey, at least I can't take my own eyes out. Oh, this is nothing. I did it to myself. You what? Ah, uh, my head case hurts. And as a show of good faith, uh, don't tie him up and even give him the remote to the TV in his holding set, I mean room. So, later that night, uh, Guy's Night 2, Electric Boogaloo, no one dies this time. But Harry has to educate Synthesis on the art of small talk. So is he the protoform eater, then? No, no, there is no protoform eater. That's a relief. I've got a protoform at home. Ooh, congratulations, what's their name? Oh, his name's Grindor. We the group also learned that Blackout is currently a painter and was also a painter before the war. And while none of us have any clue what art looks good, we know that his looks nice. It's nice looking art. It's neat. <laughs> uh, could you paint me sometime? I'll paint you like one of my k girls. We wrote back completely blue screens at that, and everyone finds it hilarious. And so, you know, the, the rest of the night goes pretty well. It was nice and chill. So fast forwarding on to the next day, there's a knock at the door and a an adequately shockwave themed bot in purple comes for Threadbare. And it is, in fact, actually someone sent by Shockwave. And we were able to verify it. And Harry, of course, takes this chance to mess with Shockwave some more. But Threadbare is out of his coma and off he goes. And so then it is on to the next match. In the left corner, we have underdogs who are quickly proving their mettle, fighting their way to the top, and to be frank, I'm quite surprised they made it this far. Spectrum! And in the right corner, we have the brave and the bold, the unstoppable force and the immovable object. Brawn! Brawn and more Brawn! Roadblock and Blackout! Uh, Blackout just drops to the ground from above, and Roadblock drives off a ramp into the air, and does a su cool superhero landing into the ring. And our match starts. Everybody prioritizes Blackout for their own reasons. Uh, and Blackout retaliates with an ability that gave him his name as he does an epic stomp that generates an EMP or an EMP wave, shutting down all non sentient tech in stadium and sending Quasar and Harrier in the process because we do not have good conditioning. What the frag, Blackout? Oh, sorry. And then he does another stop to turn the power back on, but uh, Quasar and Harry are still stuck. Uh, and Rotoback flies up to Blackout. Listen, uh, I'm not going to ask you to throw the match or anything, but can you, like, go easy on us or something? Yeah, yeah. Gotta make it look good for the audience, though, or they'll think you... Seriously. You're seriously doing this right now. So Roadblock shoots Rotoback with the star, and she's well stunned. And Charlie strikes when Blackout aims his energy waves at Ken, at Harry, and Synthesis. Synthesis is fine, but poor old Harry is stunned and is forced to take the hit, hitting his head against the turnbuckle and getting instantly knocked out for half of the match. So, most of the match results in Blackout taking some decent hits, and Roblox essentially getting hit with pool noodles. Until he decides he go he's going to ram straight into Roblox in vehicle mode, and Blackout doesn't take too kindly to this. All right, I've had it. I've never liked you much, and, uh, I'm taking that blaster for myself. So Blackout pulls a heel turn and teams up with Spectrum to take down Roblox, which still, unsurprisingly, doesn't really do much to penetrate his armor. Eventually, Synthesis does manage to wake Harry up, who is very confused by this whole thing. Uh, why is Blackout fighting Roadblock? It's... It's a long story. Hard cut to Roblox slashing wildly at Roadblock. <sighs> Why uh, won't uh, you uh, uh, go uh, down? Uh. Eventually, Synthesis gets the knockout blow, stabbing Roadblock in an impressive display of sparks, which just leaves Blackout. Ugh, screw it. Time for some audience participation. So Harry hatches a scheme and blends in with the crowd and situates himself behind Firecracker and KOs Blackout with one shot, making it look like Firecracker is the one who shot him. Unsurprisingly, the host taking shots at a contestant doesn't go over well, and they all start booing and throwing stuff at him, including paint, and he jets off before it gets any worse. 
So, understandably, there's a feeling that Harry took things way too far, so they venture over to Firecracker's office, where Silvercase is being chased out via having scrap thrown at him, and he gingerly rushes past the party without saying a word. Harry and Quasar crowd the door and try to con- uh, and try convincing him that this could be spun in a more flattering direction on his part, with Harry admitting he took the shot. They both listen in, and Quasar hears what almost sounds like an engine taking off, Harry cracks the door open and just barely avoids the bullet whizzing by his head, and he weasels his way in, trying to make a deal with Firecracker, which goes about as well as you'd expect. Oh, don't worry, Ultraviolet. I've got something very special in mind just for you. After that frankly unsettling encounter, they decide to group up with Roadblock and Blackout and chat about what really happened. So you didn't learn from the last time, did you? Uh, no. Hey, since it doesn't really matter now that the job fell through, who hired you to get the blaster? Yeah, it was, uh, sorry, a bit hard to think. I hit pretty hard. Uh, Talos, I think. Was it Gallos? Yeah, that was it. Gallos. Uh, okay. So after they realized that Galvatron is the one who hired Roadblock to get the, uh, blaster, and Roadblock failed to get the job done, everyone agrees it'd be safest if he decided to stay with us at the safe house until we all sort of skip town. And so that's the events of Session 7 summarized pretty succinctly. Hope that was fun for y'all listening in. It's a different kind of video, but, you know, new formats are fun. Hopefully, if this happens again, it's because we choose to do it on purpose and not because something goes terribly wrong. You didn't have to tell them that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is our new format. We're going to do it like uh, read-along books where you hear the chime and you turn the page. <laughs>